Hi guys, welcome on this virtual box machine. It's an I said I've built this morning and it's the Arclix XL. What I want to talk about is Pipewire. Maybe you've seen what we did with Carly. So in the audio it says here, sound server pulls audio. In the project Carly, which is um, one of the websites of Arch Linux, we've called it ArchLinuxISO.com back in the years. And on here we have the customized Arch Linux ISO telling you how to create an ISO from really scratch. And that's the first thing we've done, right? Years ago. And now we're at Carly 11. And in Carly 11, we thought let's switch things around a little bit. So we went to Plasma to XFCE, but also we changed to Pipewire. And here you see adding packages, Pipewire design and so on. Now you experiment with these things, right? You learn from the best, which is the Arch Wiki. Go read Arch Wiki, always. Whatever thing you wanna know, learn about, okay, go to the Arch Wiki and read. Then, that's me personally, then whenever I learn something, I'm gonna put it on my GitHub. And then on here, there are some things. There is at this point in time, the Arch Linux, that's a new guy, Arch Linux Nemesis. So when I am on Arch Linux, I'll use this one. When I'm Arch Linux, I'll use this one. So that's a bunch of scripts that I wanna keep around because it makes my work easier. After every clean install, I will say, remove this, add that, and uh, those personal configurations go there, etc., etc. So whatever you, you, you can just get a account on GitHub or, or GitLab or wherever, right? And you can push and pull all your data to your computer system. Yeah, it was Arclinx and then Nemesis. This video is about what if we start with Excel and switch to Pipewire. So we go to the code that we got, AOR, and it says in here somewhere, install Pipewire. Not seeing it right now. This is helpful. This is helpful, there he is. Okay, so open up, of course, never run anything you don't know. See if you can trust it, know who it is, and then trust him. So actually we're gonna say no confirm, so yes, need it. If it's already there, well, it won't be installed, skipped. And all these guys come in but we do have Pulse Audio. So all the Pulse Audio guys go out and this is for my blue heads, my Blueberry, my Bluetooth headset. I'll remove that one as well. And then install it again after Pipewire Pulse. It's, it's gradual, it's in time, right? It, first this, then that, then that. It's tested that this gonna work and not maybe another order. So the thing is, order matters. That's the only message I wanna give. If you wanna write these scripts, it matters what you do first, what you do second. So let's see if it's still working and then we can add this video. So here is, here is the symbolic link, Pipewire session service. It's that's important. It needs to start an application. The service needs to start. Now I do have uh, an issue with the server I'm on and that's Osbeck. Whoa, that's one of the best and he has a problem. So just a glitch, no problem. The other guys kick in and everything is now installed. Bluetooth is back in. We have uh, Pulse Audio Socket and here again, create a symbolic link, Pipewire Pulse. And my Bluetooth st stuff comes back in, but this is a virtual box. So. I test that on the real metal. And then it says reboot now, SR, reboot now. 
So for the guys who want to go and try it out, if Pipewire works on their hardware, if it's better, etc. It's a few scripts, a few commands. Well, one script, a few commands. And this is LightDM Slick Reader, if you were wondering. This is not the standard. I've been making some tutorials about it, so hence I boot up like that. Now, let's see if INC capital F is going to show me something. Now he says that Pipewire is running. Sound server, Pipewire. So try it out. See if you like it. Um, it's just another application, another tool to listen to your music, for example. All right. Cheers.